Okay, walk. Today we're looking at journal page 81, exact trigonometry values of special angles. Refer to page 80 for the 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangle notes. Okay, reference angles. The reference angle is the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis. So a couple things to note is when we talk about quadrants, the x, y are positive, positive in the first quadrant, negative, positive in the second quadrant, negative, negative in the third quadrant, positive, negative in the fourth quadrant. Okay. And notice, notice which one's positive, the x in this case, and the y is negative, and so on. Okay. All right. Now, here we start zero degrees. Okay, we go counterclockwise, okay, 90, 180, 270, okay, this section right here is 1, now it's 1 because the x value is 1 here on the x-axis, this is negative 1 because the x value <coughs> is negative in the quad, okay, if you would, go ahead and complete your reference angle notes, all right, now your notes are completed, let's take a look at the example. All right, use the trigonometry, trigonomic functions to find the missing size, okay? Now, we see that this is 30 degrees. That means this is 30, this is 60, this is 90. So we can use our 30, 60, 90 table, which we know this is x. This is x, square root of 3, and this is 2x. Now, we're looking for a, c, and a, b, okay? And let's go color code that. So let's go ahead and color code AC as green. Okay, and let's find AC first. Okay. Now, before we can do that, we need to find the side lengths of the triangle. Well, across from 36, that means X is 6. That means if X is 6, this is 6 square root of 3. And then 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, so this is 12. This is 6 square root of 3. That means the length of AC is 6 square root of 3. <coughs> All right, now let's find AB. Well, AB is 12. Okay, let's take a look at example 2. Now, we see that if this is 60, this is 30, so this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, that means we know this is x, x square roots of 3, and 2x. Now, it looks like that the length across from 90 is 30. That means we know that 2x equals 30. So when we solve for x, x equals 15. So that means this is 15. So the length across from 30 is 15, and this is 15 square roots of 3. So this is 15 square roots of 3. All right, so now let's find the length of Ki. So Ki would be 15 square roots of 3, and Ji would be 15. Okay, let's take a look at example three. All right, now, if this is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And we know that that is x, 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 square root of two. Now, it looks like six is across from 45. That means x is six, so this is six. So this is six, and then this would be six square roots of two. All right, so to find Fe, well, we now know Fe is 6. And DE, oh, it's not the camera. Note to self, do not punch camera during video. Okay, DE 
which is 6 square root of 2. All right, let's take a look at example 4. Okay, if this is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees. Okay, so we know that this is x, x, x square root of 2. So then it looks like 12 is across from 45, so that means this is 12. So that means x is 12, so this is 12, this is 12, and this is 12 square root of 2. Okay, so RP is 12, and QP is 12 square root of 2. All right, go ahead and finish up example 1 through 4. All right, now let's go and take a look at example five. Draw and use a reference angle to find the exact value of each trigonomic function. Okay, so tangent of 60 degrees, okay? So we know that this is 60 degrees because we know that 60 lies between zero and 90, okay? So if this is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees. Now, we know from our notes that this length is 1, okay? Now, we know from our table, we can go back to this table, that we know that 30 is x and 60 is x square root of 3. So, if this is 1, then this is 1 square root of 3. Now, it wants tangent of 60 degrees. But we know that tangent of 60 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. Well, opposite 60 degrees is 1 square root of 3, which we can just write as square root of 3. And adjacent is 1, so square root of 3 divided by 1. So we know that tangent of 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3. Okay. <clears throat> now let's look at, look at example 6. Now, sine of 225 degrees. Well, we know this is 90. Or, I'm sorry, this is 0. This is 90. This is 180. This is 270. Okay. Then 225 lies between 180 and 270. So this is 225. But we, we're using reference angles, so we need to know how much do you add to 180 to get to 225. Well, to find that out, you take 225 minus 180, which equals 45 degrees. So your reference angle is 45 degrees because 180 plus 45 degrees is 225, okay? Well, if this is 45, we know this is 90, and this is 45. Now, we know from our notes that this length is negative 1, and this length is negative 1. Because remember, the quadrant, the x value is negative, positive, and then in this quadrant, it's negative, negative. So the y value is negative, and this is the y value. Okay. Now sine, we know, is... So sine of 225 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Well, we have the opposite, right, which is negative 1, but we don't have the hypotenuse. But we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know that negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared equals h squared. Okay. Well, that's 1 plus 1 is 2. So that's 2 equals h squared. 
Well, you take the square root of both sides, you get the square root of 2 equals h. So that's divided by square root of 2. But we know we don't leave the square root in the denominator, so we need to multiply this by square root of 2 divided by square root of 2. Well, that equals negative square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. Okay, go ahead and finish up example 5 and 6. And try to address this a little bit. It's hard to see the negative, so let me... That's a negative square root of 2. All right. Let's take a look at example 7. Okay, sine of 90 degrees. Well, we know that if this is 0, this is 90. Okay, and what I'm thinking about it, to be consistent, this is 0, this is 90. So that's why 60 degrees is there, because it lies between 0 and 90. Okay. All right, example 7. Well, 90 degrees, that's right here. So technically, we don't have a triangle. We just have a vertical line from here to here. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to make a triangle come out here. Okay. And I'm going to draw a dashed line, okay, because technically we're pulling this triangle out, okay, so that we can use a trig to find here, okay. So technically that's there. So we're just moving out an imaginary triangle here so we can use a trig there, okay. Now... This will be 90. And actually, see, this one's complicated because technically you want to say that that's 90, right? But this is the actual 90 degree, okay? So this length right here is 0, right? Because we know the point here is 0, 1, okay? Because you have that point there, okay? So this is zero, this is one, okay? So now we're gonna use sine of 90. So sine of 90 degrees equals, well, we know it's opposite over hypotenuse. Well, opposite is one, but we don't have the hypotenuse, okay? So to find hypotenuse, we know that 0 squared plus 1 squared equals h squared. Okay, well then that's 1 equals h squared. Well, when you take the square root of both sides, you get h equals the square root of 1, which equals 1. So the hypotenuse in this case is 1. So that's 1 divided by 1. So we can say the sine of 90 degrees equals 1. And that's a very, probably my least favorite because it's it's just so weird pulling the triangle out that way, okay? Now, example 8. Cosine of 150 degrees. Well, we know that this is 0, this is 90, this is 180. Okay? Well, we know that 150 lies between 90 and 180, okay? So we have to think about, well, what do you subtract from 180 to give you 150? The answer to that is 180 minus 150 equals 30. So this is, the reference angle is 30 degrees. And if that's 30 degrees, this is 90, this is 60, okay? Now we know from our notes that and I don't know if you caught it, but 
if you notice, 30 is across from 1. So this one's kind of unique in that 30 is going to be across from 1. So this is 1. Okay. Now we know if this is 1, this is 1 square root of 3, but this is negative. Okay. So cosine, we know cosine of 150 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, adjacent is negative square root of 3 divided by the hypotenuse, between the hypotenuse. So we know that, looking for h, so we know that 1 squared plus negative square root of 3 squared equals h squared. Well, 1 squared is 1 plus negative square root of 3 squared is a positive 3 equals h squared. Okay, well, you take the square root of both sides. That means h is the square root of 1 plus 3, which is 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so h equals 2. So the hypotenuse is 2. So cosine of 150 degrees is equal to negative square root of 3 divided by 2. All right, example 9. Now, example 9 we need to convert pi to degrees. So to do that, what we need to do is multiply that times 180 divided by pi. Because we know that 180 is equivalent to pi, and we can use that to convert. So when you do that, the pi's divide out, and you're left with 2 times 180 divided by 3. We can use our calculator for that. Just the light on that. Or all this, whatever this is. Okay, so 2 times 180 is 360, so that's 360 divided by 3 is 120. Okay, so the cosine of 2 pi divided by 3 is 120 degrees. Well, we know that this is 0, this is 90, this is 180. Okay, so we know that 120 lies between 90 and 180. Now, to find out what this angle is, we need to take 180 minus 120 equals 60 degrees. So this angle is 60, which makes this 90, which makes this 30. Okay? Now, we know that this is negative 1. Which we know from our notes that if x is 1, then across from 60 is... 1 square root of 3. And the reason why that's positive and that's negative is because we know in this quadrant the x value is negative and the y value is positive. Okay? Now, cosine, so cosine of 120 degrees equals adjacent, which is negative 1, divided by the hypotenuse. We don't have the hypotenuse, so let's find that. Well, we have negative 1 squared plus square root of 3 squared equals h squared. Well, that's 1, that's 3. 1 plus 3 is equal to h squared. And we know when we take the square root of both sides, the square root of 1 plus 3 is 4, which is square root of 4 is 2, so h equals 2. So the cosine of 120 degrees is negative 1 divided by 2. All right, last example. Okay, example 10. Tangent of 11 pi divided by 6. So again, we need to convert this degree, so we need to multiply this by 180 divided by pi to convert that to degrees. Well, the pi's divide out, so we have 11 times 180 divided by 6, and we can use our calculator for that one. Okay, so control divide. 11 times 180 divided by 6 is 330 degrees. Okay. Now, we know that this is 0, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, okay? 
Well, we know that, oh, and this is 360. We know that 330 lies between 270 and 360, so we need to find this angle, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So we have to ask ourselves, well, what do we subtract or add the 330 to give you 360? Well, 360 minus 330 equals 30 degrees. So this is 30 degrees, which makes this 90, which makes this 60. Okay. Now we know that across from 30 is the 1, but it's a negative 1 because we know in this quadrant, the x value is positive, the y is negative. And then we know across from 60 is the x value squared to 3, so that would be 1 squared to 3. Okay. Now tangent of 330 degrees is opposite over adjacent. Well, opposite is negative 1, and adjacent is square root of 3. But we know we can't leave the square root of 3 in the denominator, so we need to multiply this by square root of 3. So tangent of 330 degrees equals negative square root of 3, and then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Okay? Now, this was a difficult concept, I know. So if you still have a lot of questions, feel free to follow along with me during the direct instruction, and I'll go over these again with you so you can ask questions, and um, I can help you understand a little bit better. But if you understood it and you're good, go ahead and start working on your assignment, and have a wonderful Wildcat day.